Here I am painting a commissioned piece for Jeff Hansen of Colorado State University. Jeff runs the Chromatin Research Lab in their Department of Molecular Biology, and he heads a team of researchers who are studying the ways that DNA packs itself from the double helix into the incredible density of a chromosome. If we were to stretch our entire genome base pair by base pair end to end, it would wrap all the way around the planet. So in order for it to fit inside the nuclei of our cells, it has to coil itself, not just once, but several times into self-similar fractal structure of helix upon helix upon helix. This is an extremely efficient way to pack all of that information into a very small space, but it also makes all of that genetic information inaccessible. And so in order for it to be transcribed into RNA and then translated into proteins, the chromosomes have to open and close in a process that's very similar to breathing. These tightly coiled chromatin fibers are unwound and expose themselves to the various elements that are responsible for reading them. So that's what Jeff and his colleagues are studying, basically, the way that DNA breathes inside all of our cells all the time. So Jeff wanted an artistic rendering loosely based on this process for the new homepage of his website. And of course, I was happy to oblige, being as it is that I'm always looking for new ways to incorporate scientific themes into my artwork. So I sketched everything out, and I lay the first basic forms down and then I took this piece out to Cervantes Masterpiece Ballroom in Denver, Colorado for a show that was being put on by my friends in the Mile High Sound Movement which is a, a local music and art collective. As for actually making this video I had the camera mounted to a microphone stand behind me while I was working on this and people kept bumping into it during the show so occasionally I have to turn around and reorient the camera. Nothing terribly dangerous but in constant risk of getting jostled. Thankfully the show wasn't sold out or I wouldn't have been able to set up the microphone stand at all. I started as I typically do on an eighth inch masonite panel which is lightweight but uh, rugged which makes it both easy to ship and easy to hang. And then I added all of the detail with opaque paint markers and a couple of opaque dry pigment pens and all of my technique has grown out of that. So there are very few painterly things that I can do in terms of blending colors or laying down washes, that kind of thing, but it does allow me to work with great precision relatively rapidly. That's got obvious perks because in the live painting environment you're often constrained by time. You can take a piece home and work on it, but in order to capture the energetic dynamic of the performance. It's nice to be able to get as much of it done while you're there as you can. Well, the trade-off using pens instead of brushes is that you can't cover large areas very quickly unless you have large pens. So I have to go buy a second set of extra markers with fat tips for the broad swaths of color like those yellow orbs that represent the histones around which the DNA is coiling. And to the left of the painting, you can see, kind of in the distant background, there are the other 22 of the 23 human chromosome pairs floating around in the soup. And in order to give them a sense of depth and distance, I used a more painterly technique for the first time, where I take a blue marker and I smudge it as I go before the paint has dried. So there's a semi-transparent effect and you can kind of see what's going on and what appears to be the very distance because those shorter wavelengths don't diffract quite as quickly. So this is my first attempt to create a very deep third dimension in a live painting. There's a very narrow depth of field and a focal length near to the observer so that we have an idea of the sense of scale that these DNA packing processes operate at. I'll also note that I've taken a bit of artistic license here and represented the DNA as a, a red single helix as opposed to a double helix just for the, the sake of preventing the image from getting too cluttered. Just like how DNA is packed into chromosomes, I had to squeeze a tremendous amount of visual information into a very small space with this painting, being as it is that it's only going to be reproduced 
about 800 pixels across, that second strand of DNA had to go. But in order to compensate for that in the very rightmost side of the image, I have mapped out the uh, two-dimensional diagrams of the fundamental base pairs of DNA and its sugar phosphate backbone, just so that I could rest easy at night knowing that I had included sufficient information about this very intricate topic. But there you have it. It's a little window into my process and what is on my mind while I'm working on pieces like this. I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone might have, either about the biology or the artistry. So email me if you're curious, and thanks for watching.